Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com, and today we're going to do a full trifecta bait shram run. No deaths, no sigils, under 45 minutes on one run, fully narrated. I'm going to give you tips and tricks, kind of what I'm doing, what my thought process is, and why. Before we get to that, let's show you the build, go over what we're using, and then let's get to it. If you like this video, please subscribe, turn alerts on, and consider becoming a member so I can produce more Elder Scrolls Online content. So we're using my Gladiator PvE build. Very simple setup, not fully optimized yet, but just to prove you can do this anyways. Five, New Moon, uh, only active on our front bar, Flame Staff. Five, Mother Sorrow on at all times. Uh, we're gonna use Fire and Lightning Staff. And then I got Garothdar, AOE little proc set here. So five, five, two, five, one, uh, one setup using Spell Power Potions on cooldown. Also, Clockwork Citrus Filet Food, Champion Points, real simple setup here. My four Shinies, um, I also put 40 points into uh, Piercing there, Eldritch Insight. So I got Deadly Aim as a Shiny, Thaumaturge, Biting Aura, and then Fighting Finesse. And I try to max out all of these things in here. And then oh, moving over to the Red Tree. Do -do. The most important one is siphon spells, siphoning spells, excuse me. So you want adds to die, you get resources back. Rejuvenate, ironclad, boundless vitality. The full build is in the description if you want to watch it. Full narrated Baitstram run here using my magic uh, Templar, the gladiator build. Not fully optimized, this is just the way I play, so don't expect a world record setting. But what you can expect is some little deltiest tips. So first things first, if you're not going for speed, or if you're going for speed, skip that mobs. If you're going for score, you're gonna need to kill them all. So what I do is I skip that pole, and I target the Spriggan here. It's a thing that can kind of self heal them. So I'm just gonna target it. Those little fire dudes are really not that impactful. So you can kind of just, as long as you're staying out of there, get out of the way. You'll notice those pink circles are instead of red. So you can actually change that in the gameplay settings. Um, I didn't really know how effective that was. And <laughs> now it really, really, really helps show where the bad stuff is. Stay out of poop, kids. Don't stand in red. Well, now we got to change it to pink. But it really helps if you have the time and you can't see as well. And you're standing in stuff and you don't really see it. Change them settings to pink. Very, very helpful. Another little mob pole here. Uh, Spriggans will spawn as soon as you attack it. So you kind of just put everything on top of it. It's not going to be that dangerous except for the bash. So you're going to constantly interrupt this guy. Every 8, 10 seconds roughly, um, they're going to cast something like this. So you can pretty much just face tank it, sit here and eat it, do some sweeps. The main thing here in this build is if purifying lights up and it's keep on proccing and my ground effects are up, it's pretty much going to die. The purifying light is the priority on my front bar along with elemental drain because it's going to do healing to whoever I target at, at their feet. In melee, perfect. Okay, first boss fight. This is pretty easy. You drop down first, you kill these, and then you're going to get a nice burn right here. So ground effects right away. It takes a couple seconds for it to spawn. So I'm trying to get everything up that I can. I missed that. These are lurchers. Very, very simple. You just kind of hang out don't eat crap don't get hit by their heavy attack the essence is going to travel to another body and that's the one you're going to damage i assumed it was over there it was not oh i should have blocked there another one so i'm going to kind of hang back here they're going to have really easy adds to kill so i put a consuming trap on them to get my flood of resources a nice little heal so use those adds just basically as a resource pool that's kind of how i use it now it's going to travel to a new body. You'll notice that yellow beam on me. Just simply bash. Don't take time to sit there and kill the Spriggans. Just kind of prioritize. You see that yellow? Get out the way. Bash and dash. So now you can see the health bar is what I'm paying attention to. The health bar tells me, can I damage this or not? So if I miss them transing them to a different body, I'm just looking at that health bar. Can I damage it or not? Yes. Okay, good. So you can see here... I put my little ground effects on, and it's really just about ground effects. Now, execute range, so I don't have to really worry about the mechanics here. I eat a big cleave. Whoops, my bad. I'm going to drop a meteor, and of course, as soon as I drop it, we get him down. Yeah. Oh, 
So killing that boss gives us the grapple. And as a magic build, I go green, portal, blue, and then red. So obviously we started in the green. That's going to give us the grapple. Once we have the mechanic, we go into the next one, which is the blue one, and it will allow us to get these blue power-ups, increasing our magic, thus increasing our damage. So the idea here is you're going to go with whatever, whatever your main stat is, you're going to go the opposite color. So obviously green is stamina. So on a stam build, you probably go blue first and so on. So that's just what I do. This fight's pretty easy. You got a couple adds you can use for resources. You don't really need to use an ultimate. This guy kind of just got a bit of a, um, HP. So you just kind of kind of kite, watch out for that AOE cleave. Just stand to the side of him if you can. Um, once he's down, execute range about 40%. We're just going to get him a little beam supreme. And then begin the grappling. Yay, yay, yay. This was really cool the first time I saw it. Now, eh, it's not so cool. Best, best, best thing I can tell you is don't move while you're grappling. The very first time I ran this on normal, I just hit like my W key to go forward and I died. So the, the grapple hook is undefeated don't go forward when you're doing it um i wall hump there to make sure i miss those ads kind of speed things up make it a little less annoying remember score kill ads not going for score grapple your face off so another little um couple ad poles here little guys where are they at where are they at little birds so you, i do elemental drain because it doesn't activate combat and you can see i put that on them and I, you can do a fully charged heavy to start combat off and a purifying light and also consuming trap if you want resources or a burst heal on these guys. I should have done a better job stacking those ads on top of the mini boss here instead of just worrying about the ads. So I would suggest doing the same. As long as you got a couple buffs on them or consuming trap so they pop, you're gonna heal. You got your shield up. You probably just need to focus on this little guy here. Nothing too fantastic with him. It's pretty obvious when he's gonna channel a big attack. So you just kinda, kinda kite. You're gonna see that throughout the fight. I'm constantly strafing, moving side to side. Those are the core mechanics that you're gonna need to do. Keep your head on a swivel. So grappling up, first boss. Um, I use an ultimate too early, so we're gonna see this here in a second. Same thing, I'm gonna start the fight. Shield first, elemental uh, drain, fully charged heavy and a purifying light. Now, I would highly recommend not dropping an ultimate there. Why? Well, one, he sprints out of it, and then two, he's gonna jump over there. So. Learn from me. Use your ultimate here because you're going to get 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 seconds where you can actually do damage the entire duration of it. So 80% is going to trigger a mechanic. Then around 60% going to trigger another mechanic. So platform mechanics going to be coming up here soon. The biggest thing to watch is just the colors. Take your time. So you change his color. You're going to hit the grapple. Go over here. Now block. See? So when, when you come in there, just expect him to block. He does a big channel heavy attack. You can eat it if you have high HP, but it's much better to dodge, assuming you have the stamina. So you'll see here, I run out of stamina quite a bit. So now we're just doing damage until we get to another HP threshold, which is going to turn another mechanic. So you can hear the NPC say the real challenge starts now. You'll notice those four ads on the corner, bash them. So you're gonna bash, grapple, bash, grapple. I'm shielding still in between. You only need to get two or three. Um, I am playing not super aggressive and fast, so I don't. You'll notice I nuked that little archer guy there. Reason being, I wanted some juice. So I put a consuming trap on him, one little attack with him, and the consuming trap will finish him off. It's a great way to get resources in between here. And so this boss, heavy attack, bull charge, that's really all you gotta look forward to. As long as you're managing your resources and kind of watching what's going on, it's not too bad. Magic builds, the biggest thing here is really just sustaining your stamina, not over dodge rolling or over blocking. Because when this, this, this mechanic comes up, I'm gonna need to constantly shield. And if I don't jump across the ledge fast enough, he's gonna jump and stun me and multiple times. I'm out of juice. See right there, look how low my stamina is. So now I'm hurting. Uh, I went use that ad there for a heal. Now he's charging. I'm on the wrong platform. He's going to jump to me again. And Delta, you, you got to block, dude. Because you know as soon as you um, transport, if you hang out there for more than two seconds, he's going to come and stomp you. Watch. See? I'm blocking. Learn, 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 Delta. You, you, did, you didn't learn, Delta. You got to block that, noob. He's charging. I do a dodge roll. Guess what? Shouldn't have dodge rolled. You see my stamina is low. And heavy attack. So I did eat it there. That's pretty risque. So be careful with eating it versus dodging it. 
this really depends on your build so i'm going to play it safe here you could only do two and just stand on one of them and finish them off um, and then also if you're playing optimally you would want to leap the last platform you went to you'd want to be the opposite color but the whole summary of this is take it slow if you're doing a trifecta run you're not going for a world record speed it's okay if you don't get the platform's time just right it will come with experience and timing so now we got him on the right platform he's doing his charge kite and beam him out and we're off so we got that one done um that guy is probably one of the toughest ones in the entire arena um we're a magic user so we're going to go blue next and the point here is so we can get the magic buff. That's why we're going with these colors. So I'll kind of show you that. I'm skipping trash again. Bad, filthy skipper. So I'm skipping a bunch of them here. You probably could skip all the way through. And I haven't experimented with it because I've just been trying to get trifecta on my, both my characters. Because I got it on Never Skip Legs. And I got to have it on Delzia too. So we got to have both those titles. Um, then we got a little boss here. Very simple. I just start, miss, miss a heavy attack randomly. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so I, I do try to have an optimal start, which is usually harness on my back bar first because I got a six second shield. I bar swap elemental drain because th both those abilities will not activate combat. Fully charge heavy attack into a purifying light. That gets a real good start in the fight. Then I'll go back to my back bar, apply my ground effects AOEs. Easy money on the start. So as you do this, you're going to have a better start or a more optimal one on your specific build. But you can use it on ad poles and bosses. So I would say practice. Now we're going to go left here. This is the this is the thing to get the magic pool. So if you look on the map in the bottom right my mini map, we're taking a left here. We're just going to do some grapples. There's really no mobs. It just takes a few seconds to go back here and get this. But look in the bottom right on my mini map. It'll kind of tell you where to go. And you can do this every single time. And I would suggest it because you're going to end up with a lot of max magic, making the fight pretty much easier, a lot easier. If you don't get this, it's going to be tough. What this is going to do is, once you get it, um, you're going to get a nice little purple shiny thing. And then you're going to have various spawns around the area in all sorts of different locations. You'll get kind of used to where those are. You just have to walk over them. You'll watch your magic bar. You had to synergize that first one and now when you go back to the area you'll see them sporadically there is a secret boss that you can do i don't do that because i'm not going for score um, those orbs can be there so you need to decide if you're going to do like a full clear or you're going to go see where those orbs are if i miss one because i don't go to the secret boss i i feel that's not necessarily going to kill me so i just skip them um, but I'm going to keep my head on the swivel. So you'll see kind of throughout this, I'm just constantly looking around because I've seen them in various different spots. I haven't memorized all the locations, but they'll stick out like a sore thumb. And once you realize how powerful they are, you're not going to want to skip one. So I, I know there was one over there. That's why I keep looking over there. Where is this? Where is this? So I kind of skip some of these Ogrim dudes here. I'm kind of peeking back here, peeling around, just looking, taking a couple seconds, not trying to set a world record. And you can see one off in the corner top left there, there's one. So I got this mob here. I'm going to start with that little thing I showed you earlier. Get my harness up. We got another mob. We'll just stack them on top of each other, make it a little faster. Purifying light. And then we're just going to eat them with some sweeps. This little mob here, you can just bash it and interrupt it. It's the basic mechanic. You're just going to apply ground effects, purifying light, bash it, and then just beam it out about 40%. It will stun you, which gets kind of annoying, but those ground effects will proc. You'll get used to it. And then you can see the purple shiny thing. I'm just licking my chops to get that. Yep, yep, yep. Give me that max magic. So there we got one. So we're just going to keep looking around, making sure I didn't bypass one. There sometimes are the beginning of spawn, sometimes at the end of the boss rounds. And we got a boss round. Very basic mechanics here is basically you want to kill them at the same time. Otherwise, one will enrage. So what you're doing here is just kind of making sure you're keeping an eye on both health bars. For whatever reason, the big guy over here is harder to damage. So I always kind of focus my single target attacks on him. Um, this guy will teleport around and eventually he'll have a shield up. And you'll need to stack big guy on top of little guy, which he'll do a little channel attack like that smashing down that right there will break the shield um so he doesn't have a shield up yet but you'll see that audible cue that audible cue protect me 
So he can't be damaged right now, which is fine. I'm going to try to get his HP down. But I'm just keeping them right on top of each other and smash. The big guy looks really scary, but his mechanics, they're really nothing. And the little guy just does a channel that needs to be interrupted. And he tra travels throughout. So that's basically it. The portals, as long as you're using ground effect AoEs, those ads will just get nuked passively. So I wouldn't really worry it with, about it. And then you just beam them, try to get them down at the same time. Easy mode. Fat loots, off to the next one. And we're gonna do these little mechanics here. So basically you have a certain amount of time to sprint through. You can use these little amplifies, restart the timer about 20 seconds. So it doesn't really slow you down to use them. I'd suggest doing it because I'm looking around. I've seen those purple things, just all sorts of various places at the start, beginning, middle of those. So you're just kind of looking for those and the extra time can come in handy if one shows up. Once you get through there, it just triggers the bridge and you go a little bit further. You kind of do this rinse and repeat for a while. And really the biggest thing you're doing here is not dying to mobs and looking for those purple things. So this specific one, I used to kill all this stuff because I thought I had to. Now you can just like skip right through it. So if you pull them, you can just harness up and it won't be an issue. And you can sneak through the side here and get this little one and then just hit this synergy and get out of here. Um, also, just make sure you're aware, looking your head on a swivel to left and right all times because you don't want to miss any of these magic ones. And I think there's a max of five of them. So you can stop looking once you hit that. You'll notice this I dude. I do probably the worst possible way you could run that and get it de detected right away. So it just slows you down, essentially getting closer and closer to that time hack. Um, so I'm sprinting, just running through my juice here. I'm going to hit that amplify just to be sure. And then again, making sure there's no purple things here. Nope, nope, we're good. Hit it later tater moving forward and then we're off again um i don't know if the bridge has to be fully assembled like uh the scoria uh in the city of ash too so I'd, i've never tested that but i'm not going to run across a, a thing that doesn't spawn yet to the right there is secret boss area and then we're just going to skip that and not worry about it we got another little orby orb and we're doing good so far and then off to the races again. 20 seconds, just like again we talked about earlier. And then I think here, Eyeball Dude. See him? We're going to bypass him. Do, 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 do. I actually did the mechanic right. Look at me. I'm learning. And so no purple thing here. Very, very simple. Click the chains. Let's go. We got stuff to kill. And Bridgety Bridge spawns. And we got this crazy dude. Biggest thing here is... Um, there's gonna be laser beams that shoot down at you. You can go up and kill them. It's not worth it. Oh purple thing get it get it shiny must must get shinies biggest thing here is There's eyeball sentinel dudes that spawn. You're just gonna have to deal with them So I'm playing melee. This has another layer of complexity to this fight and I'll kind of explain what I do But what you're doing is the boss will channel these heavy attacks that you can bash Okay, about two to three cycles of that and then he's gonna spawn and add a sentinel the sentinel is hard to kill, like right here. It's hard to kill by yourself, but if you stand right behind it, not in front of it, do a little damage. Also, I kind of throw that to proc the damage on the boss. They're going to cast this little channel effect that you saw earlier that we bashed, and that will actually just kill it kind of passively. So it's really that mechanic. Now I know to drop the house because I have about two or three rounds where I can bash the boss doing this. Once you interrupt him, you get about one or two seconds where he's not that aggressive. The biggest thing here is the lasers hit you at the same time as the boss cleaves hit and hit you. You'll see my health drop pretty significantly. So kind of be aggressive on the shielding. Now I'm trying to start to turn circles. I'm turning the circles because I'm trying to find where that eyeball dude is. So I'm just making sure while I'm kiting, it wears eyeball dude. Where's eyeball dude? I'm using puncturing sweeps. Um, it's not that optimal compared to my ground effects, but it keeps me healed up. So I can kind of pay attention, eyeball dude, nothing yet, not see anything, eyeball dude. So now my magic's a little bit low. I'm going to harness, fully charge, heavy attack. Harness again, fully charge. Do about a sweep or two here. Do my ground effects. Health gets low, harness, no big deal. Puncturing sweeps to get health. Stack back on the boss, stack it and whack it. We got an ultimate up here. We're getting pretty close to Oom um, out of magic. Oh, got hit by a bunch of laser memes. I'm hurting, but good old puncturing sweeps taking me home. Purifying light. Now I'm blocking, dropping the house, prepping up my ground effects, doing one sweeps to get my health up. Two, I lied. 
purifying light, and then I'm just beaming, being careful, and we got him down. Next up, we have the Ready Spaghetti. Um, another thing to note is these get progressively harder, so the mobs will be a bit harder each portal you go to. Um, this one is somewhat challenging. The ads, for some reason, kick my butt in here. I've died way more to the ads than I've done. <laughs> I've died to the bosses. So I take my time on these ads. I don't really know at this point which ones you can skip or not. So I've just gotten blasted by these guys. Highly recommend sticking back to that one bar, the very easy bar, this back bar with the harness, um, and just shielding up. So these guys here, you'll notice they'll jump one, two seconds. So you can either kind of time it, that tail whip almost kills me. So two tail whips by these guys will just kill you. So if you don't know what the heck you're doing with them, like right there, ate it again. So that's why I take a lot of time with those clan fears. Because they just nuke me with their stupid jump and tail whip. So you know the jump's going to come about two seconds. Again, I missed it. I know, I need more practice on these guys. But like, I don't know why, they just make me nervous. I'll sit there and like face tank the boss with these clan fears. I'm just like dodge rolling excessively. I, I don't know, they just bug me. So I think I just need to get over my uh, fear of them. Good start here, fully charged, purifying light, potion off cooldown. Two ground effects, harness to be safe. And then you, you can harness, like, every time you go back to your back bar, if you're a stand build, you're going to use, like, Vigor or some type of heal. If you're a magic build, if you don't know what the hell you're doing, just harness up. Okay, look, this is where we're going to get the health one, the health version of this other one. So look in the bottom right where my map is, if you're confused on where to go. But it's just to the right at the start of this one. And so basically what happens here is you get in the lava the harness magic is going to shield you from taking damage you're going to get these little amplified things right just like the previous mechanic we experienced now i screwed this up big time so i'm running through here and you'll notice the buffs in the bottom middle left of my screen there'll be a debuff it'll go away after a certain time so i get over here use harness just you could basically just spam it and i run out of time because i didn't even just look around where these things were i just in the past had just yoloed off and found them so don't do that actually look at where you're going <laughs> don't be me or you're gonna have to redo this for a minute or two so you get this i can look straight ahead okay we got one over there so let's not take the back way this time harness up just incessantly harness 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 you see oh oh about to die about to die about to die spam harness and i'm waiting for that debuff to go away now my heart's beating i'm panicking freaked out questioning why i did that um, but yeah, we learned. So now I'm taking a little bit slower. <laughs> I don't want to die on a uh, run from a basic mechanic just being impatient. This is all you're doing. Don't be an impatient meatball like me. Use harness in between. Get the little amplification thing and then you're going to synergize this. Now that's going to allow you to find these red orbs just like we did the blue ones increasing our health leading up to the last fight. So the red ones are a bit more challenging to find. A lot of times they're in the lava. And so there's a mechanic we're going to experience here that will kind of show you where those are. Um, this fight here, I'm looking to the right. I've seen those orbs back in there. So I'm just kind of peeling, making sure they're not there because the health one in specifically is amazing. So this mob here, I hear it like making a fart, Daedra fart sound or something. I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to kill it. Better be safe than sorry. And then get a fireball in the back. I'm looking around, looking for those orbs. Don't see it. Mr. Daedra face here, very simple stuff, harness up. So optimal start, just kind of practice on your own. Um, the less DPS you have, the harder this is gonna be. The more DPS you have, especially if you have some passive healing or using the pale order, this is gonna be quite easy. These fights are in VMA, they're in Vagestram. Basically it comes down to, if you have passive healing, you can just face tank the fire like that and harness magic. If not, it's gonna be hurting. So there's the first one we got, yay, just jump over it. And we got one boss round pretty simple here we're gonna get an optimal start and i use an ultimate to start with this one okay so fully nice burn to start because they're not going to transit right away the biggest thing here is trying to aoe the ads down cleaving the ads and the boss at the same time will make this much much easier so you get a fully destro on that one before they transit and move to a different location i start taking damage over there from that portal so i'm backing up here at range and i'm trying to get the range guys to stack on top of the boss it didn't work that long because i was impatient there but you can see how they're closer 
So now they're closer, what I can do is kind of hit them right there. And I'm trying to hope that Blockade not only kills them, but the, the boss too. Then the Synergy pops out with the little dude. And so that will actually cover up the Lava Pool if you hit it right. I did not. Shocker. But if you do, it'll cover up that Lava Pool and it'll kind of stun the boss for a couple seconds. Allowing you to just get some free damage. So it's worth killing these mobs on top of each other. Another thing I'm doing is I'm trying to cast Drain on both the Add and the boss. So Elemental Drain for resources. So if I accidentally attack them. But also, it's the resource sustain is one thing. But it's the damage. So they're going to take more damage because I'm reducing their spell resistance. So there's twofold reasons to do Elemental Drain. It's going to make them just, it's going to kill them faster. Okay, now the Daedra comes out. This is an optimal time to drop the house, get them both down. Once the Daedra is down, it's pretty easy just to finish this boss and kind of ignore the adds. So what's going to help you? Ground effects, purifying light, doing a puncture and sweep if your health dips. And then once you get about 30, 20%, all those things are up and your health is pretty high, then I'd beam them out here. Just go beam them out through that synergy down, get a quick stun on them. And we're just going to beam them out. Easy peasy. Let's go. Moving on and get some fat loots here. And then this is the mechanic. So standing on top of it, that's important. It blows up. You can see the buff in the middle bottom of our screen. It has a timer. You'll notice I get a certain amount of time and these little red things are everywhere. So you gotta collect them. And now I'm just running my little Templar butt as fast as I can. I slot a tripod instead of spell power. Reason I'm doing that, I need to heal right now. These ads kick my butt and I've died, eat crap to these guys a bunch of times. So some of this stuff you might be able to skip and just harness through and move on. Um, I haven't experimented with it yet. So I'm just gonna kill them real quick. Another reason to kill them is you're gonna get ultimate back. There's another one that makes it really hard, a bunch of these ads. Um, and I've seen these red ones spawn a bunch of different places here. So you'll notice I'm kind of like constantly panning. That's why, as I've seen the red orbs here a lot of times. So maybe experiment if you're trying to go faster, which ones you can skip, which ones you can't. So this is a gatekeeper. You have to nuke them down. Um, best thing I've found is kind of stack everything on top of here. Blockade it has such a big range here, along with spear. You can basically get them all. My Garothar procs with Solar Barrage, and I can just AFK kill stuff. So it's going to be really handy to use that Solar Barrage, Garothar, Elemental Blockade, and Spear in the later rounds, because it just has so much AoE cleave damage. So I'm peeling around before I kind of get my path set. Standing right on top of it. Learn from me. You got to stand on top of it. And then you kind of peel through here. Now you'll notice the big fire colossus in the back. You can aggro him if you accidentally light attack or use your blockade on the guy. How, is, how do I know that? I've done it. So I don't know if you can skip these guys or not, but I try to kill one real quick and then kill the other one before the other one aggros and not cast my blockade <laughs> to aggro the big guy. So I'm gonna peel back a little bit, then blockade and spear, and he's getting down, same thing. So now I have an ultimate. I don't know what, but like the hardest boss mechanic in this is these stupid ads coming up next. They just kick my butt, and I don't know if you can skip them or not. So I just drop the house on these ads coming up for trifecta runs because they just just eat me for lunch. Just I'm a little toast to them. So I come up here, peeling around. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is do a bunch of drains. I want to get their resistance down. Doesn't doesn't start a combat. I got a few seconds left on my timer. Bunch of drains and oh and guess what? I'm just about dead. Lovely. I saw I'm roly poly dodge rolling around. Drop the house here. Cause I've just like I don't know. I don't handle this one very well. Get a couple of them down. Harness. I'm playing really defensive here. So the boss round is next. Optimally, you would not want to drop an ultimate here. That would not be what you wanted to do. But guess what? It's better to drop an ultimate, clear this on a no death, no sigil run than not. So we're not going for world record score. Makes sense to me. Um, last mechanic here, I'm just peeling around. I'm slotting back my spell power potions. And so don't be afraid to do that. If using a tripod lowers your DPS, yeah, it'll lower it quite a bit. But who cares if you can survive? And survive is what we're going for. Survive and speed. So I got here through here. And then I'm going to kind of look around, see what I see. Oh. I see another red thing. So my timer ran out, so we're gonna have to use it. So this boss, we're gonna experience the same red orb mechanic that we just had. Um, the biggest thing here is to peel around and look. So spell power potion, harness, 
my focus, drain, good start on him. Purifying light, and you'll see it in the top left there, that orb spawns right there. So I catch that pretty early. After two light attacks, he'll do his little channel thing. And so you got kind of used to when he does this, and then he'll go into this phase. I do not time this. I've tried it before, I've done it, yes, but it's not worth it. So what I do here, he'll take a little, see that little fire thing that shoots out at you? You can harness through that, put a blockade and a spear on him, and a purifying light, and you'll still do pretty good damage to him. Once that's done, then I stack by the orb. So he's gonna do this, you gotta get on top of it. So one harness, fully charged, and that's gonna allow you to do a lot of damage here. Now what will come next is the Fire Colossus with a bunch of adds. The adds can be annoying, but they also can be used for resource sustain with Soul Trap. Um, and so I'm not gonna use an ultimate until they're in range and I bust one on these dudes because I've died before to those Fire Colossus. The boss, not so much. The Fire Colossus, yes. So fully charged, get some juice back. I see that Fire Orb over there. So Elemental Drain, Purifying Light. Now dude's casting his big, huge, heavy ability. So what you'd want to do is wait for the boss and stack and whack both of them but i'm gonna try to get this guy down it's better to get this guy down and then to worry about a perfect rotation and so we're basically going to do two waves of this um you could go faster if your dps was higher and or you are just better at those mechanics but i'm not going to risk it so you see he's in the corner there and so i saw that red one earlier right so why not let's go grab it there's no fire colossus up. The boss is a melee boss. So as long as we sprint over here, we'll have enough time to get this and come back, making the last boss much easier. So there's really no threat here. Yes, you're losing out some damage, but that, was, that extra health bar is amazing. So I'm gonna stack him in the middle. The reason being when he does his uh, helicopter flame of death thing, it's not gonna be right on top of the orb that I need to use. Learn that the hard way too. So I got him right here. We're gonna wait for that. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna run out of there, fully charge. Blockade, harness to avoid getting my HP to dip, harness again, same thing, spear, blockade, orbs up. We see it in the top right, so we know exactly where it is. Now we should have a Colossus coming up pretty soon. You notice he's an execute. So if you're hot dogging it, you could just kill him right here and just ignore the stuff, or you can take it time, uh, nice and slow. I'm gonna slot a tripod. Again, my damage is lower, roger that. That's fine, I'd rather survive. So you can kind of avoid this mechanic by taking one of those orbs to the little ledge, but I just don't do that. And so now I'm kind of panicking in my head, to be honest, because I got ads chasing me. I don't know what's going on. But use the ads with consuming traps. So I threw a trap on them, trying to let my blockade nuke them down. And I'm just going to try to stack and whack these. So I hit this optimally here. So I got the boss in there. I got ads in there. I got crazy dudes in there. And I got an orb right in the corner, right? So we're looking pretty good. Now, you see why you don't want to do that? Because now I can't get to that orb when he's doing the flame mechanic. So pretty soon after he does that flame mechanic, he'll be channeling the thing. That's why I want to get those adds down quickly because otherwise they'll hit you while you're taking damage, trying to do a heavy attack. And if your shield's not big enough, you're just going to eat it. So you see, harness, got him down in time. So now I'm not getting pressure, making this much, much easier. Just constant stuff here, elemental drain, my um, ground effects, solar barrage. I got plenty of stamina, so I'm just gonna roly poly. Smoke him with the beam, beam him out. Buckle up, final boss, here we go. It's gonna be a long one. So I went back, spell, uh, put my spell power potions on. I don't have an ultimate to start, that's okay. I err on the side of caution on the last boss, which is primarily focusing on the ads. The ads overwhelming you is probably gonna be your number one source of frustration and death. So I'm gonna pop my spell power potion here, get my buffs going, just so make sure I don't miss out on any damage. And then you can start buffing like right now because the boss will spawn pretty quick. So you can actually time the heavy attacks and your ground effects AOE. So I do a pretty good job there. I completely miss on the spear and just chuck it like 40 meters away. <laughs> Probably because I'm nervous. I don't want to die again and do this again. I have to re-record this and stay up all night. Anyway, okay. Anyways, we're, we're getting them down. The biggest mechanic here is these ads come, they're a pain in the butt. If you want to make this easier, you do damage to the boss and the ads at the same time. The audible cues from the boss will let you know what's coming next. So you're listening to the boss and that's when they're summoning other dudes, okay? Next thing, they'll be summoning the waves that have to come in here. It's a DPS check. So if you're getting a lot of pressure, 
it's really hard to kill these guys and I drop the house usually. So when there's a ton of ads, I'm not even gonna worry about it. I'll just drop the house and uh, Destro ulti them down. So the archers, they can be really, really painful. If you get an archer, you get a caster, you get a blob dude and a colossus guy, you're gonna be hurt. So feel free to drop your uh, your the house here and nuke them. It's better than dying. But if you can get a blockade, a spear, a solar barrage like this, position right in between the boss. So I'm damaging the boss and the ads, that's optimal. You'll notice I'm not doing a good job of keeping my channel focused down because I'm moving so much. So my magic's getting pretty low here. That's okay, harness up, fully charge heavy. Blockade, let the ground effects take the time. There we go. Magic's coming back up, potions um, just used, so we're good. 10%, they're gonna spawn another thing where you go grapple all A. So you'll notice I'm going to the red one first. This is just works for me. It's usually the hardest one for me. So I grapple to the red one. In here, the boss is gonna heal up until you kill them. Stack, 2H guy on top of mage, drop the house. Don't ask questions. It's gonna be like the 2H guy you faced earlier. They're gonna do one mechanic and then the spinny charge thing. Joe, get out of there, Deltia. So with the extra mage in here, make sure you harness. The ground effect should be able to take care of the mage. Same thing we just did. Fully charge heavy if you're low in oom. Your goal here is to survive and get your ultimate charged up. Because when you go through the portal, one, you're going to want to use harness. Two, get ready for the, the tether thing to be happening. So watch what happens. We go through here. We get the portal. And you got about 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. And this thing is going to come soon. Enough to do a fully charge heavy and point yourself in the direction you want to kill. There, blockade, spear, elemental drain, purifying light. One, two, beam. That's about as clean as you can do it. Then you kind of peel back, so the mage is the priority. Now, you want to do blockade, spear, so it touches the mage, and it touches the boss. They're channeling in there, so I'm going to wait and kind of be cautious with this. The boss will spawn to your location. So if you stand on top of the mage, the boss will stand there. Then it allows you to kind of go back. I almost die because the archer is coming up. There's all sorts of crap. I'm getting overwhelmed, right? My magic's low. Life is not good. I do one harness, fully charge. One harness, I'm not dying. I'm dropping the house. I don't care if the boss is in position perfectly. Notice the boss channels up, just like I said. They'll follow you. My position is right by the green thing. So when we get her down to 10%, she runs off. Now we got another layer of complexity. The mage is going to be in this green one. So as soon as I transit in here, now I have to deal with this mage. And yes, then the minotaur dude. What you can do here is try to stack them on top of each other. I don't do a good job of that. So what I should have done is pull back a little bit further, allowing the kind of the Minotaur melee guy to stack on top. Blockade will reach both. It'll speed things up a little bit. Also, you can kill the mage before you transit in here, which will allow you not to have that much pressure, making this much easier. The higher damage you have, the better. If I go in here and drop the house fully buffed and everything, uh, the mage will be, uh, the final boss will be about 35% when I come out. That's like a perfect clean run with an ult. If not, they're going to be at pretty high like they are now. So get ready. We got about five seconds before the minions come forth, right? So you notice I'm standing right by this guy. So when this guy channels his attack, if he does, I can bash and interrupt it. And I'm just going to spam, spam. I'm dropping the house. So my damage is a little bit low right now because I'm getting pressure and my magic's low. Fine. I'm just going to nuke him. So two adds come up. And that's a good instance where you can use Consuming Trap and get some juice back. So calm down. We're doing pretty good. And we got one more to go. So I'm just going to hang around the boss. They're going to spawn ads. And I'm going to look, listen to audible cues. Audible cues. Audible cues. That's going to tell me what's coming next. So now we got a bunch of crap. Last one up here. And guess what? Another mage is going to follow us, pepper us with damage. This one's not so hard because they're both mages. So hypothetically, if we pull them back here... Stand them right there. Hit a spear so it gets both of them. So I did a much better job positioning them on top of each other. So blockade, the spear, the solar barrage, beam them out. So I'm playing pretty passive because I don't want to have to do this again. On an optimal run, you could play a little bit more aggressive and stack right on top of each other. But for this, easy money. Um, if I play a melee with this guy because he does a couple channels that you can bash. If you bash it and time it right, you'll get a bunch of free time on the boss. Um, so it's just easy to kind of stand them in melee. About 20%, you're going to beam them out. And guess what? Another mage appears. Okay, we're going to have a lot of fun when we go back in here. So you'll notice I harnessed, hit a potion, harnessed again, going through. 
Yep, he's a channel one. So give me a little bash and get ready for a fully charged. Guess what? We know the mechanic. That's going to help you tremendously knowing when you come back from the portal, you're going to have to deal with this. I'm dropping the house. I'm not going to fuss with it and worry about who's channeling what, who's casting what. There's too many ground effects. Your last one coming through is going to be the hardest. There's going to be tons and tons of mobs here. So the last stage here, consuming trap on those blobs. Those are just free health, free resources. They're very low HP. The casters stand on top of them and or the archers. That way you can bash and interrupt them. And when the boss travels to you, then you're going to blockade, spear, solar barrage, Garothar, just lay waste to them. I'm going to take it a much slower because I don't want to have to redo this again. I'm just add control, add control, add control. Magic's low, rip off fully charged heavy, popped it right back up. Uh, the Daedra is doing a pretzel, so we know we're hurting them. Now we're trying to get it. We're probably going to have to do one more tether phase. So I'm listening for the audible cues. That audible cue, add coming. Okay. Now I'm listening for the audible cues to see if she's going to do the next one. She goes up top, does the audible cue. So I got one more I got to do. This is going to be tough. A lot of stuff on the ground, a lot of hard hitting mobs. My ultimate's up. This is why we slot Meteor. Goes right on the guy. It's in the pathway of this dude. Oh, broke the terror just in time. Hell slow. I'm going to rely on sweeps till I get closer. Harness. Harness. Dodge. I've got plenty of stamina, so why not use it? I'm getting really low here. Here we go. Fully charge. Bang. Now, add control. Consuming trap is your friend if you need juice on those blobs. Ultimately, you want to do damage on top of the boss too, but I'm just going to make sure I get this cleared. So... Add control, doing some sweeps, trying to get my Grothdar and Solar Barrage on the boss. Now we're in range to kill him. We can deal with one at. Now I'm taking sweeps all the way home. It's just too easy. Easy money, easy money, beam supreme. Heart is pumping. Don't want to have to do this video again, but we got it down. When in doubt, what you learned and what I learned doing this. Use harness magic. Have one simple bar on the back where you can harness, throw some ground effect AoEs. Use your stamina liberally on some of the fights. Dodge roll as a mechanic to survive. Um, fully charge heavy attacks. Those are very, very useful. So, we got it done. Um, my second trifecta run on a different Magpar. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed producing it. Uh, we got full... Uh, bait tram and we got a full vma and the gladiator we could do a lot better once we learn a little bit more about the mechanics and we practice this a little bit more thanks so much for watching and we will see you back next time if you like this video please subscribe turn alerts on and consider becoming a member so i can produce more elder scrolls online content